This is the brand new Insta360 X4 360 action camera. And I feel like this kind of just broke the entire action camera market. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Dave from Chase's Summit. And today we're gonna be taking a close look at the brand new Insta360 X4. Before we go any further, a quick disclaimer. I've only had this camera for a couple of days. So this won't be like an overly in-depth review about the good and the bad. This is really going to be a product highlight about the camera, the new features, what it can do and all of the impressive specs. And of course, along the way, as we go through all of the new features, I'll also be showing you sample footage that I've recorded with the Insta360 X4. I've been using these cameras for a very long time. Way back in the day, I purchased the original Insta360 One X, I think it was called, that was their first 360 action camera. And I took that on a whole bunch of different ice climbing adventures. Then I upgraded to the X2 and I used this for ultra running and hiking and things. Then I upgraded to the X3 and I bought these all with my own hard earned money. So when Insta360 offered the opportunity to take a look at this camera early, I said yes, because I highly doubt this would be a letdown. And spoiler, it is not a letdown. With all that jabber out of the way, let's dive right into what exactly the X4 is and why you would get it over the X3 or any pre-existing Insta360 action camera. There is one major feature on this camera that really sets it apart. So in the past, all of these 360 action cameras had one thing I didn't love about these cameras, and that was the overall image quality and resolution. You see, a 360 camera is super versatile because you can mount it on a selfie stick and kind of stick it out in front of you. And now this camera is going to record absolutely everything that you're doing. And then after the fact, you can go in and reframe your shot. So not only could you be filming yourself and you could be aiming the field of view at you, but then you could go back in and kind of repurpose that same clip for something else. However, in the past, they were limited to a maximum resolution of 5.7K. Now 5.7K sounds like a lot, but you got to keep in mind, you're basically rec recording an entire sphere of video all around you. And then after the fact, you're going to crop into that to get the shot that you want to post on social media or on YouTube or whatever. And you see when you crop into that spherical image, that's where you lose resolution. You won't get that 5.7K. Instead, when you crop into a normal 16 by 9 aspect ratio, you will end up with something like 1080p. And that's where things have changed with the new X4, because this camera can now shoot in 8K resolution. You can get a full 4K image that looks very similar, eerily similar to something like a dedicated action camera with a single lens and a single sensor, but now with the versatility of being a 360 camera. It's pretty wild. With all of that said, I'm already getting ahead of myself because I'm very excited about that 8K resolution. Now let's move on to pricing because this camera did get a little bit more expensive as compared to the predecessor. The new Insta360 X4 comes in at $499 for the base bundle. Okay, let's take a closer look at the camera itself because there have been a few tweaks in terms of hardware compared to the previous generation. As you can see here, this camera is built pretty tough. They used all plastic materials here, but in the hand, it feels really hefty and well built. And they say that they've increased the durability and the ruggedness of the build. And for a quick size comparison, let's take a look at the older generations here. I've got the Insta360 X2, the X3, and the new X4. And something you'll notice with these cameras is that every new generation gets a little bit bigger because they're cramming more technology in there. And that's no different with the X4. Even though this camera is overall a little bit bigger, it's still pretty portable. I have no issues with it like going in my pocket. So on the front of the camera here, there's not a whole lot to talk about. There's sort of a ridge design. And then down the bottom here is a little status light to let you know when you're recording and when the camera's on. Flipping onto the other side of the camera, again, below that microphone port, you do have a little door. And when you open that up, you get the USB type C port. And then below that is the battery. So unfortunately, if you do have X3 batteries laying around, it will not be compatible with the X4 because it simply, it just doesn't fit as you can see there. But that's for its benefit because the battery life on this camera also got an improvement, which we'll talk about in a minute. If I flip the camera up on its bottom here, you've got the same quarter 20 mount that we're used to on all of these action cameras. However, on this one, it does feel a little bit more robust. Like, I don't know if they molded some metal in there, but it is pretty tough and it does look like there's also a quick release mechanism, maybe for an accessory that's coming soon in there as well. And flipping the camera over one more time brings us to the front of the camera or the back of the camera. I'm not sure which is which. And that's the display. This is a 2.5 inch display. 
which grew in size as compared to the X3. Slightly, this was a 2.3 inch display, so you've got a little bit more viewing area to look at. And as you can see, you've got a preview of what the camera's seeing, and the cool thing about these action cameras is you can simply touch and gra drag, and you can kind of flip over and look at other areas, and now you can see my overhead camera above me in a really, really awkward looking view of my face. The user interface on the X4 is very similar to the user interface on the X3. They're pretty much identical in most ways. However, there are a couple of tweaks. For example, now you've got a field of view option on the bottom right here. So if I tap on that, I can choose mega view, ultra view, or de-warp. And mega view is a new field of view which is designed to give you straight lines and reduce distortion, but also be super wide. Other than the field of view, you can also tap this little bottom area here for resolutions. And this is where you're gonna see the biggest changes on this camera. First of all, you've got 8K 30 frames per second. However, with that 8K 30 resolution, there is a little note at the bottom of the screen here, sort of a warning that says higher specs may heat up the camera. And to use this in windy conditions or while moving, in low light conditions, it's recommended to use 5.7K. But in my testing so far, I know this is not a full review video. I haven't run into any overheating issues, but I guess time will tell. However, that 8K resolution is not the only exciting stuff in this camera. If I jump over to 5.7K, you're gonna notice that 5.7K goes all the way up to 60 frames per second now, where on the Insta360 X3, it was limited to 30 frames per second. And again, if I jump over to 4K resolution, you'll notice that this goes up to 100 frames per second, where on the Insta360 X3, we were capped out at 60 frames per second. So that's also a nice change of pace. Down below that little preview screen, there's also a couple of buttons here. And the one on the right will let you toggle through the various modes. You've got video, active HDR, You've got time lapse, time shift, bullet time, loop recording, star lapse, burst mode, interval mode, HDR mode, photo mode, and back to video mode. But another really cool feature of the X4 is if we dive into that settings here, you go to single lens mode. Single lens mode basically turns the X4 into a traditional action camera by only utilizing one of the cameras instead of using both. And the reason why you'd wanna do this is if you wanna mount it on your helmet and go for a bike ride or mountain bike ride, or you're just filming something and you don't wanna to have to edit that 360 footage in post. However, there's also a couple of other modes in single lens mode. If I scroll over here, you've got me mode. And me mode is super cool. Me mode allows you to mount it to the invisible selfie stick. As you can see here, I've got it on the selfie stick. And the cool thing about this is it's still using both lenses, but instead of you having to edit it in post and reframe your shot, it's basically just aiming the perspective at the person holding the selfie stick. And this is really useful for me because as a runner and a hiker and a climber and things like that, I'm often just recording myself. And with me mode, I can simply just hold it out at an arm's length and know it's recording me and also not have to do anything in post to get that video file. With that quick rundown of the user interface out of the way, let's talk about battery life on the Insta360 X4. Because like I said earlier, the battery got bigger physically and that's a good thing. On the Insta360 X4, they've increased the battery capacity to 2,290 milliamp hours. And that will give you up to 135 minutes of recording in 5.7K or up to 75 minutes in 8K, which is really impressive. In 5.7K, that's a 67% improvement over the X3, which had decent battery life, but this just kind of blows it out of the water. Speaking of accessories, let's talk about that now. The Insta360 X3 is compatible with all of Insta360 standard accessories. And that includes the GPS remote I have here. This is a sort of like a GPS watch you wear on your wrist, but it'll actually give you a live preview of what the camera is recording in real time. You can also control the camera from the watch on your wrist and embed the GPS data from the watch into the camera's footage. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but just know this is compatible with the X4. Even though the GPS remote is super cool, I think the accessory I'm most excited about is the new removable lens guards. These are a game changer. These protruding lenses on these action cameras are sort of the necessary evil when it comes to these types of cameras because they need to shoot everything around them and unfortunately, if you lay them down on a table, the first point of contact is that lens. On the new Insta360 X4, they've changed the game a little bit because if you look closely at the camera, you'll notice this little 
sort of ring around the camera. And that's actually a mounting pattern for the new lens protectors. So if I take these out of the box here, you'll see that these new lens protectors are a little plastic dome. I think it's plastic. I don't think it's glass. And it's got a little base to it. And I can take that, put it over my camera lens on the X4 here, line it up and give it a twist till it clicks. And the nice thing about these protectors is if you damage them or get them smudged up, you can just simply take them off replace them and put a new one back on and you're ready to go. Okay, now that we've talked about the hardware in the X4, let's talk about the software because that's where this thing gets really magical. As you can see here, I've got the Insta360 app loaded up on my phone. I'm gonna jump to some pre-recorded footage that I've already made with the X4. So as you can see here, we've got a clip of me running down the road. And again, because this is 360 footage, I can simply drag around and look all around me. And I can also add keyframes in here to tell the app where I want the figurative or the virtual camera to look and what perspective I want. However, Insta360 has added some really clever tools in here as well. Up at the top here, you can see I'm right now I'm in pro mode where I've got full capabilities. I can go in and change the color, the, add music, change the volume, add motion ND, which adds a little bit of blurring to high frame rate situations to make it look a little bit smoother. And I can also change the speed, add multi-view, freeze frame and save a picture add stats for my Garmin or Apple Watch, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And you can also take a snapshot or do face filters and a whole lot more. In AI mode, it will analyze your clip for a second, and then we'll ask you if you wanna have a compilation, a selfie view, a forward view, or some other views. And then down the bottom here, it gives you a couple of edits it made from this clip. So if I clip, click on the first one here, you can see it's got me putting the camera on the selfie, it cuts to the front view of me running, and it's doing this completely automatically. It just spun the camera around to give you an idea of where I'm running. Super cool. I did no editing here. This was completely automatic. And jumping back to the pro mode here, there's a couple of other features of this app that are really useful. Again, the fact that you can just repurpose the same clip for various uses is really handy here. So you can see down at the bottom, I can choose my aspect ratio. So if I want nine by 16 for Instagram or TikTok or whatever, I can do that. But if I'm making a YouTube video like what you're watching now, I would use 16 by nine. And then I can reframe my shot again and I've get a video ready for YouTube. Again, super useful and super versatile. And that's why these cameras are so awesome. Now I just wanna give you one more example of something that's super cool in this app. And that's the integration between Garmin or Apple Watch and the Insta360 app on your phone. So as you can see in this video, I was running. And of course, while I run, I record my activities on my Garmin 400 965 I have here. So now in the app on Insta360, if I scroll over, I can look for something called stats. And now you can see I've got Garmin Connect as an option here. So if I play this back now, you can see that the stats are updated in real time depending on what's happening in the video. So if your heart rate is going up, so will the heart rate in the video. And I just think this is a lot of fun and really useful for certain activities like running or cycling, for example. And the final thing I wanna to touch on with the Insta360 app is the Explore tab here. This is a lot of fun. If you wanna try out some different effects like the AI warp effect, you can try that by clicking on AI warp, grabbing a shot and just importing it and it will do these wacky effects to it to make it look like a cartoon or whatever you prompt AI to do. It's a lot of fun. When it comes to the stabilization on the Insta360 X4, just like on previous Insta360 models, it is class leading. The combination of having a 360 camera with such a large canvas and cropping into it allows the stabilization in this camera to be completely mind blowing. All right, now this is a wind microphone test. I'm out here on a run. I'm at a pretty good clip. And there's a road next to me that's very loud, along with a lot of wind coming right at me. So I'm curious how the X4 is holding up in this kind of windy conditions. How do I sound? The new Insta360 X4 also gets a handful of new gesture and voice controls, which are super handy and surprisingly accurate. For example, I could say something like, take a photo. Start recording. And now there's also gesture controls. And as you can see here, it's saying raise your palm to start and finish a recording. Here you can see the preview screen. And if I raise my palm, you can see the camera started recording. And if I raise my palm again, you can see it stopped recording. And 
It just works really well. And when it comes to still photos on the Insta360 X4, get this. You can see the resolution here says 18 megapixels, but if I swipe over, 72 megapixel stills. The Insta360 X4 uses AI in a mode called Pure Shot mode to process 72 megapixel stills. And these are upscaled from the sensor using AI to give you incredible detail. This mode delivers insanely high resolution images that you can zoom way into and see the little details and find details of like a tree out in the distance from a single image and it's really wild. So those are the new and exciting features on the Insta360 X4. And I gotta say, this camera has been a lot of fun so far and I'm looking forward to putting it through its paces at a lot of upcoming events that I have and I could just imagine the creative possibilities I now have with this camera. And now I wanna hear from you. Are you gonna pick up an Insta360 X4? Does it have the features you want or are you gonna stick with the Insta360 X2 or X3 or some other camera? Let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you. As always, if you're interested in picking up the X4 or any other camera I talked about in this video, I'll have it linked in the description down below. And while you're down there checking out the product links, check out the links over to my social and media accounts like my Instagram, my Threads account, my website where you can buy some t-shirts like this and anything else I've listed down there. Oh yeah, my podcast, check out that too. All right, friends, that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please consider hitting that thumbs up button, subscribing down below and stay tuned for the next one. I'm gonna see you next time. All right, bye.